Yo, so this week um, I had very little time. So I thought I was gonna do something fast. This took a lot longer than I expected, but I wanted to paint, so I painted. Um, I used the Bing AI. So I can't guarantee where the Bing AI gets its information. It's Chat Dolly, I think. Um, anyways, I used the Bing AI chat generator to make images because the image generator was like out of commission, whatever it kept telling me. So I asked for cartoon roseate spoonbills because that's my favorite bird. And I don't see very many people doing that online. And I wanted some kind of like inspiration because um, that's really the only bird I paint lately. And I've painted it a few times and I keep painting it the same way. So I wanted a different way to do it. Um, I, I have a mural of it in my kitchen and I made a tattoo concept that I wanted to get at some point eventually. Anyways, I also asked for the Shoebill Stork because that's another favorite and I consider doing that. So here's what the AI spit out for me. Um, and then the picture out of the four that I chose as ideas and like inspiration, I should say. So then I take an already prepped canvas because I was trying to be fast. I'm glad I did because this is barely gonna be done in time. And then I take acrylic gesso because I wanted it to be watercolor and this helps watercolor spread really well. So yeah, I'm doing it basically the same way I did the others. Um, okay, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> so it's just a really simple shape for this bird. Um, it's uh, kind of like a, I have, I don't, I asked the bot what kind of art style this is and it told me there is no, it has no name. So I don't believe the bot for that. So I think this is just, I'm calling it geometric. I don't know. Anyways, cartoony, whatever, uh, words. So I block, I first I drew it. I don't know if you even noticed that. I, I don't remember seeing that. I drew it and then I used some charcoal pencil to make uh, spots that would become what's the word shading as you go. So then first it was the regular graphite pencil and then it was whatever I just said, charcoal, so that it shows better. Are those charcoal sticks? Whatever, anyways, the other stuff. And then I'm using this gesso, right? Did I already say I drew it? I have, I have a brain today. So I gesso out the all the basic shapes, leaving little tiny gaps so I can tell what my shapes are in the end, you know, so I don't have to try to draw it again. And I couldn't really tell if it was seeping through the gesso in a noticeable way or not. And then I did not want it to all get completely painted over. So I was careful with that. Um, but it did take a while, longer than expected. And, uh, I was distracted <laughs> like I am now. Oh my God. Uh, so I, I couldn't think of what to do to the background that was geometric or whatever, you know, like old 90s blocky print. So I only did a little bit to the background. I could have probably done more. I, I liked how it looked too in this just blue and white step here. So I might do something like that in the future but maybe a different type of bird because I think this would look cool for a quail as it is like this. Um, quail is not a favorite bird, but it was the camp cabin when I was in sixth grade. So that's not a good thing. Oh my God. Uh, so anyways, did I ever say why this is the best bird ever? The roseate spoonbill is the best bird ever because it's first of all pink and white and then secondly it's tall and then it has the long beak bill that that's a bill so that's why it's the best bird ever and then this shoe bill stork is the second best bird because it's insane it's almost the size of a person and 
they look scary. And they'll sometimes just walk over and try to stick someone's head in their mouth, like the handler person at a animal place. I don't know what those are called. So I was showing all the colors that I used for the bird. It is a yellow face with a darker yellow around the eyes, and then a yellow beak that fades down into, that's a bill, that fades down into like a grayish blue tip. Um, and then the body is white on the head and then the neck and a little bit of pink on the chest and then pink on the back and the wings. And the darkest pink is at the body. Hold on. Okay, um, I don't know what just happened. Anyways, I was talking about the colors. So the pink down the body, I feel like I was looking at it while I was talking about the colors. Was I looking at it or just picturing it in my head? Oh my God. Ugh. So anyways, um, I feel so lost now. Ugh. I think I was looking at it, but I couldn't have been looking at it. I feel insane. I've been looking at it all day, so, okay. Anyways, they sometimes have little hair pieces that stick off. Oh, I feel so lost. Oh, where was I? I was talking about their color. They're darker pink at the bottom, and then they have little hairs. I think I said it all. And then the long legs. I was talking about the colors I chose for my palette, wasn't I? Oh my goodness. So then, yeah, um, their eyes are totally red, like bright red. Um, and then I think that's all the colors in them. And then a tiny bit of black for the pupil. And then for the background, I wanted it to be really vibrant, different colors than this. So I went with a violet and an orange. I really did not know what colors to choose, but I liked how that looked. And then the corners, of course, I wanted to be gold with silver accents. So that's what I did for that. And then my paint pens. My paint pens suck. They all like, okay, so this is uh, like a 40 pack. I forget how many came in the pack so many of them the tips don't work on like okay thanks that's cool so i have to improvise which with which colors i use i can't use the black ones at all in either set they both don't work so that sucks um so i've taken to using gold silver and white as my outline colors for the most part um Yeah, did I talk about how this is watercolor? This is watercolor paint so that it spreads well. And I just like how that looks. And it also helps with like the graphite under so you can still see some of those details as shading. And the corners I did with acrylic paint because I don't have a gold or a silver in the watercolor. Um, actually, I might have silver, but I, I don't think I have gold. I might actually hmm interesting I don't think so though because I had to use my gold acrylic for a different project I'm working on um anyways with silver touches to make it so anyways <laughs> that's something else um I lost my train of thought what else is do ugh so I did a second coat of the watercolor just for S's and G's here. And I didn't know what to do in the middles of my end caps. So I tried to make them look, you know, kind of fancy. I don't know, whatever it is, what it is. Um, yeah. The best bird ever. So that's how I spent part of my day. It's actually a considerable part of my day. This is like half the day here that I've now invested into my art project. Wow. That's not how I intended this day to go. 
But, you know, that's all right. It's all right. I'm tired. And I lost my train of thought, so that's a bummer. Mm, it's a super bummer. Okay. Ugh, I feel like I was somewhere explaining this project, and now I have no idea where that was. So I have nowhere to go with my explanations. I use a whole bunch of different brushes with for this. I like um, flatheads, flatheads, flats, filberts, and rounds. It's not a screwdriver. <laughs> that is the best screwdriver though, because you can use it for everything. Um, yes, I have a favorite screwdriver. Um, I'm gonna say um 400 times, wow. I need an um counter here. And so I'll just click and wiggle. That helps. I made chocolate today and I made it extremely dark because there's no one here to tell me it doesn't have enough sugar in it. <laughs> I like it to be extremely dark though. Like if you don't feel like you got punched in the face by your chocolate, it wasn't dark enough. That's how I feel about chocolate. So, yeah. Anyways, my paint pens, I use paper to make them go, you know. Sometimes I'll use a palette, but I don't wash those and then they get crusty and, you know, you have to pick them off. It's easier to just use paper and then use that same paper later when it dries for something else. Um, did I mention that I used that pointy circle shape thingy? I think it's called a compass to make my perfect circle. I thought about using like a plate or some object, but then I was like, wait a minute. So, and then in order to not damage your canvas, you poke the compass pokey part into the eraser and then you put an eraser in the middle of the page and then you hold the eraser with your fingers and voila, you don't have a hole in your canvas. If you have an eraser that doesn't erase because it's garbage and only decorative, shove your compass in it. This this day is chaos. This week has been busy. Ugh, hopefully next week's better. I have zero plans. So it's probably also chaos. My oh my. Oh well, okay, so whatever. Bye.